Hi, everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of the EV Journal Club. Uh, we have a, a, a special topic today that actually combines several very interesting themes. Um, as we all know, extracellular vesicles are made by all sorts of organisms, um, not, just, not just mammals. And today we're going to hear about some of the EVs that are made by some of those other organisms. Um, we're also going to hear about a different source of EVs that uh, many of us have not studied and perhaps have not even contemplated, um, which, is, which is dust, dust that can be found in the household. Um, and, then, and then finally, we're going to be hearing about cancer and cancer metastasis um, and how the EVs that are in our environment might affect that. So our speaker today, I'm, I, I have the great pleasure of introducing Yong Din, who is currently uh, studying in post-tech, which is in Poang, South Korea. Um, and she's uh, working there with, um, uh, with, with, with a, a, an amazing team, really, of uh, EV scientists. Um, uh, it's led by uh, Yong Song Go, whom many of you know, um, as somebody who has contributed uh, greatly to the International Society for Extracellular Vesicles and also to our um, journal, the Journal of Extracellular Vesicles. Um, so, Myung, thanks so much for joining us today, and um, I'd like to, uh, to hand the, the screen sharing over to you so that you can tell us about your fascinating work. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ken. So, uh, uh, once again, thank you so much, Dr. Ken, for a very nice introduction. And um, hi, everyone. Uh, it's my pleasure to be speaker today, and welcome to the EV Journal Club. So, uh, I guess... You may not know about me in a um, very new phase here. So I will spend a little bit, um, some minutes to introduce myself. So I'm Yung Ding. Um, currently, I'm working as a postdoc in uh, Yang Song Ko Lab in Pohang University of Science and Technology in uh, Korea. So uh, here also the place that I finished my PhD. And currently I'm working, my work is focused on understanding the role of EV in different pathology, especially in inflammation and cancer. So today as a part of my work, I would like to share with you about uh, my work related to the effect of inverted EV in cancer metastasis. And this work was published in the Journal of HSL V School uh, maybe one month ago. So the reason I drew the inverse as uh, uh, my study subject is because of that. Recently, there are a lot of concerns uh, uh, about the effect of indoor pollutant to the human health. So our study is based on the So our study is based on the background from the previous study. In the previous study, they showed us they can isolate the EV from the indoors. And then when the indoors EV were internationally twisted to the mice, they can uh, mediate the lung inflammation, which were characterized by the increasing of EV cells in the lung, as well as the increasing of inflammatory cytokines in the bone fluid, such as TNF on for or IL-6. Also, in another study, they found that the patient with the asthma, the OBD, and lung cancer, these people have a high level of uh, indoors EV antibody in their, in their blood serum compared with the healthy people. And this, this research suggests that the indoors EV could um, associate with various lung diseases. However, why the indoors EV have been reported to mediate the lung inflammation and to be associated with various lung diseases? We have no idea about their roles in lung cancer metastasis. And as you know, the lungs are one of the most common sites for cancer metastasis. So there's uh, how the indoors EV can contribute to this process 
should be evaluated. And this is also our research question in this body. So to access the region, I first collect the indoors and then solve the light in the PDS. And after that, the insoluble matter in the indoors were removed by filtration and saturation. And finally, indoors EV were purified using the combination of ultracentrifugation and bio density gradient with centrifugation. So with this method, we could achieve around 22.4 microgram of indoors EV per one gram of indoors. And under the same image, the indoors EV will show with the spherical and membrane enclosed structure. With the DRS analysis, we find that the indoors EV have the average size around 129.6 nanometer in diameter. For further characterization, I could find the version of lipid A and LTA in the indoors EV. Here, L lipid A is the core component of the some negative bacteria liposaccharide and LTA is the important component in the world of uh, gram positive bacteria. However, I could not find any version of the human derived protein, such as CD63, CD89, CD81, CD9, and TH1101. So the data suggests that a part of indoors EV may originate from bacteria rather than the human cells. Uh, next, to investigate the effect of indoors EV on cancer lung metastasis, the indoors EV were internationally treated to the mice one day prior to the um, melanoma cancer cell injection through the vein, through the tail vein. And after 14 days after cancer cell injection, the cancer lung metastasis were determined by counting the, the number of colony in the lung. As you can see here, the international treatment of indoors EV can uh, induce the cancer lung metastasis in the mild metastatic model in those dependent manner. At 5 and 10 microgram is sufficient to induce this effect, which will get characterized by the in increase of the colony number as well as the colony area in the uh, lung of mice. Then the cancer metastasis is uh, a process that uh, um, includes so many different steps. So uh, I may try to uh, determine which step is mainly effect by the indoors EV treatment. So to do that, I treat the indoors EV at different times, as you can see in this scheme. So the time of treatment, including the retreatment, when the indoors EV was treated uh, before the cancer cell injection, and the co-treatment when the indoors EV and cancer cell were treated at the same time, and the post-treatment where the indoors EV were uh, treated to the my after cancer cell injection. Uh, I would like to explain a little bit about the concept under the uh, experiment design here. So in this study, we use the mouse metastatic model by the intravenous injection of cancer cell directly to the blood vessel. So actually, when we use this model, it can access two important steps of uh, cancer metastasis, including the extrapolation step and the cellular growth in the new tissue. So if the EV were uh, pre or co they can affect both extra and cellular growth. 
But if the indoors EV were purchased, they mainly affect the double of growth step. And the result that I get, I got here is, as you can see here, I I observed that only retreatment and co-treatment of indoors EV can enhance the cancer metastasis, while the post-treatment could not enhance this kind of effect. So this data suggests that the indoors EV mainly affect the extra processing cell rather than the uh, cell of growth in the new tissue cell. Seeing the uh, cancer cell extra prostation is characterized by the number of uh, the number of cancer cells that infiltrate into the tissue. So in this experiment, I try to determine the infiltration of cancer cell and the lung tissue. So what I did here is I treat the mice with the PBS and indoors EV one day prior to the intravenous injection of cancer cells. And after that, uh, I collect the lung at zero hour. This is uh, served at the control and 24 hour uh, after cancer cell injection. So after that, the lung tissues were sectioned and then uh, stained with the immunohistochemistry. And in this image, as you can see here, the cancer cell were labeled with the green and the blood vessel was show with the red and the here uh, I can observe the uh, uh, the infiltrated cancer cell were determined by the cell present in the interstitial space but not in the blood vessel. So if you can see here the I can observe the infiltration of tumor cell into the lung in the both PBS and indoors EV treated group after 24 hours. However, compared with the PBS treated group, the indoors EV treated group can enhance the infiltration of tumor cell around three times higher than that of PBS group. So this data suggests that the indoors EV can promote the infiltration of tumor cell into the lung. Using the uh, migration of states in vitro, I found that the indoors EV could not directly imbue the mi migration of cancer cell, as you can see here. So I thought that maybe indoors EV can uh, push the indirect effects on the tumor cell migration. So in this experiment, I prepared the lung lysis from the PPS treated uh, mice and indoors EV treated mice. And then I treat to the cancer cell in the migration assay instead of the indoors EV themselves. So uh, even I can observe the uh, I can observe that the lung lysis from both PBS and indoors EV treated group could enhance the tumor cell migration in those dependent. However, the lung lysis from indoors EV treated group can uh, more efficiently promote the tumor cell migration. So that means that the indoors EV can promote the tumor cell migration in indirectly. Uh, I need to try to find out which factor in the lung lysis can uh, be responsible for the tumor migration of cancer, uh, for the migration of cancer cells. So here I try to focus on TNF alpha, which is well known to be involved in the cancer cell migration. And I found that the TNF alpha increase in the lung of the mice when treated with indoors EV. And then the knockout of TNF alpha can um, reduce, significantly reduce 
the tumor cell migration in vitro. Also, the knockout of TNF alpha can inhibit the indirect EV uh, mediated enhancing metastasis effect in vivo. So together, this data suggests that the TNF alpha keep a critical role in the indirect EV mediated lung metastasis. So at the beginning of in the very beginning slide, I show my uh, our research question is how indirect EV affect lung cancer metastasis, and the answer for this question is the intranasal treatment of indirect EV to the mice will induce the production of TNF alpha in the lung, and after that, the TNF alpha enhance the migration of cancer cell into the tissue and it's caused the enhancing metastasis effect in the lung. Uh, since the indoors EVs are very complex mixture that's originated from different sources. And for me, the complexity is all the way very hard to control. So that's why I go further in my work to find out which is main source that produce the indoors EV and it is mainly responsible for the promoting lung metastasis of the endorsed EV. So many study, so many study report that the bacteria are common pathogen of the endorsed. So I try to identify the specific bacterial species which produce the endorsed EV. To do that, I perform the RT-PCR with the 16-8-RRNA primers and of course using the indoor EV uh, template. After that, uh, I take the amplified product and send to sequencing. And after a light sequence, I found that Pseudomonas uh, genus is the um, main species in the endorsed EV. Uh, so as a repre representative of bacteria Pseudomonas species, I culture the Pseudomonas arenosas and I purify the EV from the bacteria culture. So Pseudomonas EV, arenosa EV will show at the spherical and membrane equal structure under the TAM with the average size of 81.9 nanometer in diameter. And I found that the Cerebonus EV twisted to the mind can enhance the cancer metastasis in mouse metastasis model. And this effect is comparable with the twisted in the EV. And also I found that the a uh, TNF alpha is critically regulated of uh, pseudomonas EV mediated lung metastasis. So altogether, this data suggests that the pseudomonas EV at least partly contribute <coughs> to the uh, uh, enhancing metastasis effect by the endorsed EV. So to summary my work, uh, we have here yeah, present for the first time that endorsed EV have the capacity to promote the cancer lung metastasis when intranasally treated to the mild metastasis model. And this metastasis enhancing effect is critically regulated by TNF alpha. And finally, we demonstrated that cerebrinous arenocyte EV as least partly contribute to the effect of indoor EV in promoting cancer lung metastasis. So thank you so much for your uh, listening. I would like to uh, receive your quest the question from all of you. All right, well, Nyung, thanks so much for that very clear presentation. Um, I think that uh, your work gives us a lot of things to think about. Um, and we do have a few questions that have come in on the chat box. 
So I'm going to go ahead and uh, let people unmute themselves. So give me one second here. Okay, so that should be working. So, so everybody on the call. So, so if um, if I call your name, you should be able to to unmute. So let's start with a question, which um, I, I think is a, a great question that comes from Adam Lee. Adam, would you like to uh, to go ahead and ask the question that you had for Nyung? Okay, uh, can you hear me? Uh, just barely. Did that better? Uh, yeah, why, why don't you go ahead and if, if necessary, I can I can step in. Hello. Um, oh, that's great. That's great. That's working well. Is this question okay. from Adam Lee, right? Uh, yeah. yeah. So um, I just have a, a simple question because the um, because the atrial cellular vesicle and the virus have the yeah. Similar side, so um, it is possible that uh, the uh, viral contamination happen with your uh, indoor dust isolation. Yeah. 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 So for your question, actually in this study, we um, we uh, didn't um, concern about the contamination of virus. And you know, it's in the extracellular field. It's, we know that all of us, we know that it's very difficult to um, like separate the virus from the EV. And then because of the, our isolation technique have a, have a lot of limitation right now. So yeah, to be honest, in this study, we didn't um, concern about the virus uh, viral in contamination. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So thanks for the question, Adam. Um, because you know, I think it's it is interesting to note that viruses have been found in all sorts of places, you know, floating way up in the air, in the in the ocean. Um, you know, there's a lot of a lot of viruses in us and around us. Um, so, but but Nyung, would that not be possible to look at your at your proteomics data and see if there are any known viral proteins there? Um, yeah, I, we didn't perform the proteomics in this study. Oh, I'm so, sorry. sorry. Let, me, let, me, let me back up there. No, I, I'm, I, I'm misspeaking um, with your sequencing data, but I guess with yeah, the yeah, sequencing data, you yeah, were looking yeah, specifically right. at, at our RNAs, is that right, and not at everything? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so, that, so then it, it still would not be, not be feasible, at least with the existing data. So. Yeah, and it, that's an interesting, um, I think an interesting question to, to ponder um, what else might be in those samples. So, so our next question comes from uh, Juan Pablo Tosar. Juan, would you like to ask a question, please? Yeah, sure. Can you hear me? So, yeah, I can yes. hear you well. thank you for, for the nice talk. And I, I think it, it's pretty clear that um, the, these uh, EVs that you're studying have, a, have an important effect on GNF alpha and on cancer metastasis. But my question is, um, what in, in, in the dust, do you, do, do, do you really have a, like free EVs or, or are you seeing the presence of bacteria like uh, in the dust? And when you place the, the, the house dust in buffer before EV isolation, then those bacteria will release the, their, their, their EVs. Do you have evidence for the presence of EVs in dust uh, in the absence of, of detectable bacteria? Okay, so uh, as I understand the question is, is this the bacteria present in the indoor dust EV? Is it, is it your question, right? Yes, yes, exactly. Okay, so to check um, if the bacteria it, con uh, it contaminates in the uh, isolated EVs, we just, um, we, yeah, we, we just do like the success. So we just um, spread, uh, we just uh, place the EV and incubate in 37 degree overnight. And we didn't see any colony grow from the place. So that means that our indoor you know, EV is not contaminated with the bacteria. So you don't need to worry about us. Bacteria will interfere the uh, observation from my study. 
Okay, thank you. So at least live bacteria uh, do not appear to be present here. You know, I had um, a, a related question, and that was, um, I was interested to see that you were not detecting any um, tetraspanins in that um, indoor dust, uh, which, which I, I found interesting because I think that um, human epithelial cells can be a big uh, you know, component of household dust. So it, it, it would suggest to me that maybe, um, maybe, those, um, maybe those tetraspanins are just no longer you know, in a confirmation that, um, that is able to be recognized. Or maybe I think that maybe in K it exists, it, it will exist. So if it's very small amount, so I think maybe it's undetectable in Western blockchain. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Uh, so our next question is from uh, Clotilde Thierry. Clotilde, go ahead and ask your question. Yes, thanks, Ken. So nice, uh, thanks for this nice presentation. So what you show suggests that um, Exposure to the indoor dust EV probably by inducing inflammation in the lung promotes metastasis. But could you check whether this is true in a situation that's closer to the normal development of a tumor, meaning a tumor growing locally and uh, with mice exposed maybe in a, in a more continuous manner or, or uh, yeah, more continuous manner to indoor dust? Okay, so. Uh, the thing you ask is about the uh, uh, continuous exposure to indoor dust. And in case that that uh, situation, as I, as I understand, when you expose the continuously with something with small amount, that means that it's involved to the chronic, uh, chronic effect rather than the acute effect. So it's totally uh, a little bit different different from our situation in this study. So we just use the high dose at then one time. So that means that acute effect rather than the chronic effect. Then I totally agree with you that the chronic, uh, chronic effect should be investigated uh, to see um, if you affect which step of metastasis. Because as, as I know, the chronic effect and acute effect they they affect the cancer metastasis in different way and different mechanism. Yeah, it was both the chronic effect versus acute and the um, normal growth of a tumor in a tissue as opposed to the injection intravenously as you did. And so I wonder whether the, the, your results that are very nicely uh, done and convincing, whether they can apply to any uh, real pathological situation. Because I also think that in, in the real life, you will not be exposed to an acute uh, <laughs> um, yeah. bowl of, uh, of dust EV, or, yeah. or maybe you could, but I don't see when. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's reasonable to ask this question. And uh, we have two reasons to believe that uh, our research can apply for the clinical study. The first one is, you know, these days the uh, indoor pollutant become very, very seriously. And you know, when we live inside a house, then uh, because the, the, the space inside the house, it's, it have very poor circulation of the air. So it have a lot of chance to, for the indoor dust to accumulate. That means that the increased concentration of indoor dust EV in the space. And the second reason is, um, actually in this study, we show that we can uh, achieve 22.4 microgram of indoor dust EV from the indoor dust. But actually we don't have, we have no idea that if the concentration of EVs in certain volume of the air, of inhaled air, it will be uh, very high in the, um, in the real situation because the, even with the best uh, isolation methods that's present, we just could achieve around 20 or 50% of the EVs that will exist in the, the sample. So I think uh, in some case, in the real life, 
the acute effect will be more important than the chronic effect. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I guess um, I, I also was wondering about some things uh, related to the exposure. So, um, so you are purifying your EVs and, um, and exposing by the intranasal route, um, for example. Um, so I wonder, is there some way, I mean, this, I, I don't even know how this would work, but is there some way to, uh, to have the animals exposed in a more natural way, like in an environment where you have planted a bunch of uh, dried EVs um, and, and what would the right control be? I mean, I'm not, I'm not even sure if this could be done, but I um, but just wondered if you probably thought about this a lot more than I have. Yeah, yeah that's, that's very, I mean, the perfect way to take the, some biological phenomenon by using the natural way uh, exposed and you could check. Um, whereas I have no idea how we can do like this and control the amount of inhale. It's very difficult if you do the, the natural expose. So maybe in the future study, if we could find some way, so it's, very, it's better to take this hypothesis from you. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and I guess um, also related to that is the, is the source of the EVs. So I think you show very nicely that you can find the Pseudomonas EVs in the household dust, and then you can also use specific Pseudomonas EVs um, and, and, and recapitulate the effects. Um, but then my, my question then would be, is it possible that other EVs would also have those effects? Like maybe if you had human origin EVs or uh, Genevieve has asked, um, and she can't ask the question herself because she's on a train, but she asked, what about EVs from acarians or insects, um, molds, you know, fungi? What, what is, um, do you think that there's more in the household dust than, than, than just the bacterial EVs? Oh, well, when you involve a lot of factors, it will be very, very complicated. Yeah, of course. Take. And then I tell you in the sliders, some for me, if something very complexity is very difficult to control, yeah, I agree that we cannot exclude the ability that some EV from another source, it can involve in this effect. But uh, here we just show the group of concepts that the bacteria EV is mainly responsible for the effect. So if we have some uh, thing to do with the prevention, so it's better to just try to find out which one is the main, uh, call the main effect, yeah, I, I think. But anyway, it, if there are a lot of things involved, too difficult. <laughs> true, true, yeah. So, so I, yeah, I know, I think that you have shown very nicely that you can re recapitulate those effects with the uh, pseudomonas specific EVs. So we, um, let's see here, we have um, one more question from Dan Dimmock. Dan, uh, are yeah. you there? There yeah, you are. Can you, can you, yeah, all right, th uh, thanks for the talk. I was just wondering if you've got any idea what sort of pathways um, bacterial EVs might be activating to induce TNF-alpha, so um, do they contain like LPS or is there any RNAs that are known to activate TLRs or um, yeah, because I've never worked with bacteria. I've never, I don't know much about bacterial EVs, so I was just wondering, yeah, what sort of pathways they activate. So for so um, your question is related to the mechanism. Yeah. That um, this pathway cleanup and fire production may be induced. Did you mean that the uh which uh like how TNF and fire can be induced? Yeah. So what do um bacterial EVs sort of contain that might be induced in TNF alpha and like which sort of pathways it go through? Do, uh, do they contain LPS or yeah, yeah. I don't know and. Um, um, is it through RNAs or? Yeah, uh, in this study, I didn't do the experiment about that. So I cannot tell you exactly, but as I guess, uh, the EV, it can affect food via the TLR on the surface and the TLR uh, stay inside the cytosol. So I think both me mechanisms will be involved yeah. in this case, yeah. 
Okay. Thanks. So yeah, so perhaps a, an LPS based mechanism, you think, or do you think it might be other molecules too? Uh, uh, LPS. Uh, I think LPS uh, should be in both because uh, the LPS have, I mean, the LPS is the main component in the bacteria ED. It's, it's already well known. So, of course, the LPS will be in both. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Cheers. But, yeah. So likely, uh, likely some sort of a TLR based mechanism would be um, would be plausible here. Good. Good. Okay. Um, oh, and then we have one more question. Juan, you have another question here about about intact EVs. Yeah, it's actually related to the previous question. If you treat your EVs with detergent, for example. Um, will you observe the same effect? So do you really need like a, an intact TV or, or or is actually the LPS? So is it more like the lights, the, the components themselves, but not 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 the EV as, a, as, as, a, as an entity? What causes the effect? Uh, I think this effect, um, I think it will happen if you just break the EV using the detergent. Because in uh, in previous studies, we have one article from another group. They showed us if they treat the LPS with the same rule, the intranasal treatment, so they can see the uh, enhancing lung metastasis effect too. So I think that it doesn't matter if you treat the EV or break EV. But the important point here is. We need to compare the effect from LPS and EV to see like, I mean, compare the effect from the same amount of break EV and the EV and to see which one will in, induce more stronger effect. So that is the, the point. Uh, is it clear enough? Or I should yeah, yeah. explain a little bit more? No, no, yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so that would allow you to observe whether there, there might be internal components that would also um, potentially contribute. Um, good. Okay. All right. Well, I think that that um, that brings us to the end of our our questions. And um, I just want to thank you, Nyung. Thanks so much for joining us again um, and stepping in. So, so Nyung did this in just a couple of days because we had a speaker who had to cancel, unfortunately, this week. So I'm immensely grateful to you for doing this. Um, and thanks for, thanks for sharing your work and thanks to everybody for joining us today and for all of the, um, all of the interesting questions. So I hope everyone has a good rest of their week um, and I look forward to, uh, to seeing you all again soon. All right, take care everyone, stay healthy, stay safe. Bye now.